So Starship Flight 4 is right around the corner. So what can we expect for this flight? As we already know, Flight 3 performed very well for the third integrated flight test. And with it all being said, it did have some failures, did have some hiccups, but definitely got a lot further th than last time and actually achieved its goal. Orbit. Well, semi-orbit. Suborbital trajectory it will still maintain. However, the main goal for Flight 4 is maximum re-entry heating, which means hopefully a stable ship in orbit. That was the main problem last time. Mainly, if it appears, that the payload door, when that opened, it, it released its atmosphere that was trapped inside of it, causing the ship to slowly rotate. And there was not a correct method of stopping the spin. So, the ship came in all sorts of wonky into the atmosphere. And honestly, it did a lot better, and actually, shockingly, surprised me that it was even surviving that long, even upside down, and stainless steel blasting the engine bay and all. With all that being said, Ship 28 tried its hardest, but couldn't recorrect for the whole spinning ordeal. And, to be fair, even if it was stable, it probably would have blown up sometime in re-entry due to a few tiles missing, which is still going to be a problem, but it depends where the tiles are. And we couldn't see every single spot, but there were a lot more tiles there than the previous starships that would lose a lot more tiles than Ship 28. Ship 28 was definitely improved on, and Ship 29 and ships after it will be way better, like ship 30, 31, and 32. Now the booster on the other hand, SpaceX is aiming to do a soft water touchdown. However, I still don't think that's going to be the case, and people might argue with me, but I still think it's going to pull a similar event to IFT3 and crash into the water hard enough to make it explode. I feel like more engines will relight, and it might be a more stable descent through the atmosphere than the oscillations that we were seeing during flight three, but I still don't think everything's gonna go flawless there. There's still a lot of data to be learned. Now, what can we expect to happen? Well, I already said we expect something on the re-entry end to be at least further than last time, the maximum heating. If we get past that, that's fantastic. If we get past re-entry, that's a big win. And will shut up all the haters that saying that the heat shield will never work. It will work. It's just going to take time. And it's a very complex system of tiles to make that all work. 17 to 18,000 tiles to be more accurate. The booster, as I was saying, will probably crash land into the water. Now, there is a chance that it will softly land and be... Well, not recovered, because this time it's going to either be blown up by probably FTS and sank, or it will be shot and also go sinking into the water. But there is a good point that I bring up in conversations with people, is that it would be a very risky move if it lands on Flight 4, during Flight 5, they go for the tower catch, just in general, because you never know if the first attempt and the only attempt that you did successfully was a fluke. Now I hearken back to SN15. A lot of people think that, and me included, think if SN15 were to fly again, it would probably not successfully land for multitudes of reasons, but pro uh, probably m the most likely reason is the Raptor liability back then. It was not perfect, and that was probably a fluke. With the booster, you would want to land this probably two to three times just to be sure this thing is actually working as intended. Falcon took a while, and that was a smaller rocket booster. This is the size of a full Falcon 9, just the booster. So thinking about how big 
the booster is coming back down at the launch site if something goes wrong you better hope it's closest to the tower and furthest as possible away from the tank farm because let me tell you the tank farm if it were to get hit i pray to god there's not a lot of propellant still in there as it would be not great over there Th there would be a big boom depending on what tanks are punctured but knowing how close the tanks are there would be some mixture that would happen but probably the best case scenario is that it just shears off the arms in a failure now that's not great but the chopstick can be replaced and there are already probably arms that are being constructed for tower two that could be put on tower one if things were to go wrong and things are destined to go wrong eventually at one point or another the tower arms will get shredded off and probably several times in the future even in full operation if something just goes wrong with the booster catch besides the point SpaceX should probably take their sweet gorgeous time with the booster catch ordeal especially when it comes down for them to do it at Cape Canaveral that's a whole nother story and we'll probably dive into the whole Florida pad situation once we get more information on what's happening with that. Well, that's in development. But for the time being, this is what I currently expect. What will happen is that the booster will probably still have a hard splashdown. The ship will probably get either to the max heating point or a little bit past that. But maybe not fully for reentry. I wouldn't put it fully out of the question. Either way, whatever we get is still progress. And towards the future of us colonizing the stars.